and that will be the season. So a day that began with the highest of hopes comes crashing down as the Oakland Raiders are going to go without a postseason now for a ninth consecutive year. So there you have it. Not the way Raider fans wanted the season to end at home with a loss. And there you see the final end of game or end of year press conference, we will call it, as the uh, Hugh Jackson first year era comes to a close eight and eight. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome in. It is Raiders press conference live. Bill Romanowski, Jim Cosimo with you. Yesterday, after the Raiders lost to the San Diego Chargers 38-26 and finishing the season 8-8 eight and eight and finding out that they could have won the division and made the playoffs, Hugh Jackson came out, addressed the media as quick as he's ever done, Bill. He was as raw as we have ever seen him as well. Do you expect the same today? Uh, I think we'll get a little bit of that. You know, it was probably not as raw, not as emotional. He's had a... You know, quite a few hours to think about it. I, I, I think his his mode today is going to be like, okay, I've got to fix this. What we did this past year wasn't good enough, and now I got to start plotting what I'm what I need to do to get this team to the Super Bowl. And Jimmy, that's really the only job he has is to win a Super Bowl, and he can't do everything. He can't do it all himself. He needs help, he needs support, he needs a whole organization. And Mark Davis, I think, is behind putting that together for him, helping. Uh, Amy Trask is, is also part of that. So uh, they've got a lot of work to do. Th this is a rebuilding year for the organization. The team needs help. They need some key people in key places. They need more leadership. But... Uh, they are moving in the right direction. Hugh Jackson brought hope this year. Is this 8-8 eight eight any better than last year's 8-8? Eight eight? I mean, they were 8-8 eight eight last year. Why is it better this year? Uh, this 8-8, eight and eight, they were 8-8 eight and eight with a period of their season losing their best football players. The guys that were, that made changes in a game that literally could take over. Darren McFadden is the kind of player that could take over a football game. When you don't have him in the game, we all know now about Denarius Moore, what a young uh, star he is and, and the, the kind of player he's going to be. Jacoby Ford, we, we know what he did last year. So they played a big portion of their season, that critical stretch, without those guys. So... Big difference. All right, let's go out to Alameda. We've got a lot to discuss today, including the general manager position, including the defensive coordinator. But right now, Hugh Jackson, whose team was uh, losing four of five no, down the stretch, no, addresses the media at, at the end of the season. That's not the flu I have. How are we doing today, ladies and gentlemen? Obviously, I guess this is the end of the season meeting. Um, this meeting is too soon for me. I would hope that we still be playing, getting ready to practice and prepare against... Uh, whoever we'd be playing this week, but it didn't work out that way. Um, yesterday, we didn't play uh, like I think this team can, and that's disappointing, as I said yesterday. And um, that's what I told the team today. And uh, we got some work to do, and um, we're going to get it done. What is the message that you gave the guys on the way out beyond that? That as a Raider, you expect it to win. And 8-8 um, eight and eight is not where we want to be. And I don't want to we'll use the old coach's cliche, you look at the wins you possibly could have won and you didn't. To me, that's just, you know, you're setting yourself up again to be able to say, hey, look, if we did this, we'd be here. You did that, you'd be there. You didn't. At the end of the day, you didn't win those games. So we got what we earned. We're 8-8. Eight and eight. We're 500 football team for the second year in a row and uh, that's disappointing but the guys that come back here that get ready for the off-season program they're going to buy in all the way to what it is that we're selling because we're going to win a championship here and that's what I told them and if you don't feel comfortable at the way I think you got to buy in then maybe this is not the right place for you. So was there, was there a segment of guys that didn't buy in? This no year? I'm not saying that there was a segment to me my, like I said, my disappointment, the last game of the season with everything on the line, um, it doesn't come down, in my opinion, to X's and O's all the time. I've been on some really good football teams, and I think at some point in time, there's a group of men that make a decision they're going to win a game. 
you know, and they play that way. And I think our team started in that fashion. I mean, unbelievable first drive by them that led to interception, unbelievable first drive by us that led to a touchdown. And then all of a sudden, to me, uh, when I looked at the tape today, it looked as if um, maybe um, we got a little complacent, you know, and said, oh, this team today, we're going to get, we're going to blow them out. They're not going to play. But my message all week has been to you, to the team, to everybody, is this, these are pros. They're going to play. They're going to play every snap and as hard as well as they can play. And when you have this much riding on the line, you got to play better than you have all year to give yourself even a chance, not to win the game, just to give yourself a chance. And when you don't do that, that is very disappointing to me. Coach, how would you letter grade the season overall? Average. I mean, and maybe C minus. I mean, we, there's too many times that we were ahead. I mean, I can go all the way back to Buffalo. I can go back to uh, Denver here. I can go back to um, the Detroit game. But I can go back to this game yesterday, and where we had opportunities, and we didn't make the most of them. So um, we're in, we wasn't good enough, obviously. So I mean, C is average, and I think we were a little bit below average. But, um, but do I think that we have the potential to be better? Yes, I do. And I'm going to get this football team better. What would you say to those that would, would say that you changed your tune a little bit yesterday with the way you dealt with the loss and, and with respect to how you talked about your players? And that, I would, that I would respect that. I, I did change my tune. This the end of the year. I told you I'm going to take it, you know. And I t took it all year for this football team. <laughs> the year is over now. Now I can tell you what I really feel. And what's really on my mind, you know, um, I know what's in our locker room, and I know what the, the team has the potential to be. And I look at me first. I didn't get them to do it, and that's disappointing to me. And then secondly, we didn't as a staff get them to do it. We got them to do it in an average way, 8-8. Eight and eight. That's not good enough. That's not acceptable to me. I don't want it to be acceptable to our players. I don't want it to be acceptable to the organization. I didn't, I didn't sign up for that. And uh, so I'm disappointed. I told them that. They understand that. And if people take that because I'm normally taking it all, and yesterday I decided to tell you what I really felt, then so be it. That's fine. Are you concerned at all that, that you know, the difference from the way you'd handle it is with the no. players changes anything? Because what you, you? what you guys don't know is what I already say to my players. See, that's the difference. You know, how I talk to them ain't how I talk to you. You know, I have different conversations with them. So I think they understand where I was coming from, whether they read it. I, I don't think there's no hard feelings. I mean, if, if a player, coach, or whoever can't take a justified whatever way you want to look at it when it's justified, then so be it. I mean, that's just the way it is. Hugh, how do you really feel now then about the defense and the way the defense played, especially down the stretch? Of the it's season? unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Are there any changes coming on, in staff-wise yet, or have you made those decisions yet? Well, I haven't, I haven't sat through it all, but um, obviously I'm going to meet with everybody here soon, and um, we'll go from there. You know, how does this... Um, can you make those changes now? I mean, with the, with, if there's going to be a, a front office hire at some point, um, and you also mentioned you started taking a stronger role within the organization, is that stuff already sorted out in your mind? No, you know? no, it's not. No, no, it's not. But I would hope as a head coach of this football team that I, I would hope that the organization understands that I have a pretty good idea where we need to go. Because if not, then I shouldn't be where I'm sitting. Um, so at the end of the day, um, I think I have a pretty good idea now that I've been through this for a year and I've done it, um, be it coaching, be it um, all kind of sort of different hats and duties, dealing with you all. And everybody, I think I know exactly what this team needs to do and how they need to do it. And uh, that's the fun. That's the fun part of it. The downside of it is I didn't want to be sitting here today. I want to be preparing for a game, and we're not. Will you be meeting with Mark this week in terms of just setting out the, the plan for this offseason? Yeah, I'll, I, I'm sure we will. Um, I'm sure me and Mark will get together here soon. At one point, you said it could be an elite defense, but now that we're really being honest, do you have the personnel to be an elite defense, or are the pieces really there? I, I thought the pieces were there. I mean, a year ago, this defense was 11th, with basically the same guys other than Matt Shaughnessy. You know, so I thought it was. I mean, that's what I made my prediction on, you know, from one year to the next. Uh, you're kind of playing with the same guys other than Shaughnessy and Namdi, you know. Um, Maybe that maybe that was bad on my part. You know, maybe I, you know, over analyzed what I thought we had the potential to be. 
but I still believe that there's decent enough personnel to be better than what we were. There's no question in my mind about that. Did you expect to get more out of McLean this year? You, know, you talked in training camp about how he needed to be great and be a leader. Did, did he do that this year? Um, I, I'm not going to talk about individual players. I just think as a group, I don't think we played as well as we can play. And um, I'm going to leave it at that. Do you feel like you saw enough just leaders in general when the team was up against the wall? Where people standing up and talking? What was the leadership in the room at halftime yesterday or some of those games oh. that you let slip behind? How did people respond after those losses? Leadership is tremendous. I mean, I... The locker room and prior to the game is as good as any place I've ever been. It's playing the game. See, all that talking don't mean nothing. I mean, you can rah rah and talk and do all that stuff all you want. You got to play. This is a performance based business, and you get paid to play, you got to play. Uh, just like I get paid to coach. I mean, you got to play, you got to coach good on game day. You know, not at halftime, not before the game. When they say set hot, that's when you got to play good. So I guess another question that would be out on the field where you're talking playing, did you see your leaders out there? Did you see leader type playing? Oh, yeah, I seen guys. I mean, there wasn't a question of effort. Mm -hmm. You know, the guys are playing hard. Um, obviously, I mean, which leads into the penalty issue. I mean, we're not playing smart enough, you know. Um, and what that does is, is take you away from opportunities and possibilities to be all you can be. So, again, we have some things to correct and address and get better at, and I think we have an opportunity to do that. I'm not going to back off of what I think this organization can be and should be. We're going to be it. We're just not it this year. How eager are you to feel the team where... You're able to mold it the way that you want to where you hire all of the coaches, you know, that come from you, all of the players, and you've got to have your hand in all of the moves. Um, I, I would I like to be involved um, just because, again, you know, having been through it now and seen it and played the different divisions and across the league, you get a different idea of what, it e what it's going to take to win. I mean, um, but at the same time, whatever Mark decides to do, you know, I'm going to respect that also. I mean, this is his football team, so I respect that. But I will want to be as involved as I can be just because I think I'm in it. I'm in it deep, you know, and I understand exactly what's going on. Hugh, how involved do you think you'll be in the actual search for a GM? And could that be kind of awkward considering you'd be then looking to hire your own boss? Yeah, I don't know that, but I don't think it'd be awkward. I I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with who I am and what I am. You know, I don't... I'm not going to get caught up in who we hire and who we bring in here. I know how that works. I know, you know when people mention that, well, if you hire a GM, then he wants to bring his own head coach. And, hey, if that's what Mark decides to do, that's his right. I don't think that that's the case, but that is his right. But at the end of the day, whoever comes here, I think it's going to be somebody who wants to share the same vision that I do, which is winning a championship, which is getting the organization back to being better than average because we should be and we can be. Have you been involved in that process yet? Have there, there been any discussions with, with Mark about who this executive could be and do you expect to be involved in that situation? We've had conversations, but we haven't said exactly who, what, when, where, and how. Uh, but I do know that uh, there's going to be somebody that we do uh, bring in here and talk to and do those things with. But um, we haven't just nailed it down or anything like that. But your opinion is being sought and you're a part of that process. Um, I think I will be. But how, how involved, I don't know that. I mean, I think he'll let me know that as we move forward. It, it's been common here in the past with, at the end of the season for the head coach to sit down and have very detailed meetings with Al Davis about mm -hmm. what went right, what went wrong. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you're going to meet with Mark Davis. Do, do you anticipate something on that level, or will you meet with a, with a group of people in the front office to look at that? I would love to meet with Mark and tell him that and feel very comfortable. Uh, with whether it's Mark or front office people or whoever who wants to listen, <laughs> you know, um, I, um, I have a pretty good idea of what, where we need to go, and um, and I think we're we're gonna go there. I I know what Mark's vision is, which is to put the Raiders organization back among the elite. It's my vision. I think it's the organization's vision. Uh, we know we're not there yet by any stretch of the imagination, but I think we're we know we're making progress. I mean, is it good enough? No, but I think we're making progress.